Jesus, I want you as my savior. Jesus, I want you as my savior. Jesus, I want you as my savior. Noted evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould, when asked by a colleague whether he thought the lack of transitional fossils threatened to disprove evolution, replied, Disprove? How can one disprove something that has never been proven in the first place? For years, evolutionists have been ridiculing evangelist Kirk Cameron for suggesting that the theory of evolution predicts the emergence of such species as the crocoduck. What they fail to mention is that in the seventh chapter of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin mentions the crocoduck by name. If my theory holds true, as will most certainly be indicated by copious findings in the years to come, then who knows what breathtaking an array of fanciful species we may uncover. It is not unreasonable, yea, it is fair certain, that the archaeologist of tomorrow will uncover the winged horse, the underwater pachyderm, the crocoduck, the serpentine ape, and a host of other incredible creatures hitherto regarded as impossible by the rigid Christian-driven dogma of modern-day science. The serpentine ape, really? In 1987, a fully intact Archaeopteryx was recovered from a tar pit outside of Osage Beach, Missouri. Except for its coloring, which was characterized by an orange and gray plumage, the specimen's taxonomy was almost indistinguishable from that of the modern-day European magpie. Indeed, every expert that examined the specimen agreed that Archaeopteryx did not represent a transition between dinosaurs and birds after all. Archaeopteryx was a bird. Once evolutionists realized that the discovery would call into question their pet theory, the archaeopteryx specimen conveniently disappeared from the St. Louis Museum of Natural History, where it was being preserved. No trace of it has ever been found. When Charles Darwin heard of the famous God is Dead declaration, as popularized by Friedrich Nietzsche in his work Thus Spake Zarathustra, he arranged to have a hand-delivered message sent to Nietzsche at his home. The note read, Congratulations on your belated discovery. Indeed, God is dead. For you see, I have killed him. In 1868, Charles Darwin announced at a meeting of naturalists, If we are to rid the world of the burdensome moral requirements imposed by Christianity, we must create a religion of our own. Fear not, gentlemen, for I have already done the groundwork for us. The name of our new religion shall hereafter be the Theory of Evolution. Documents obtained from the discovery phase of the landmark court case, Kitzmiller v. Dover Area School District, reveal numerous instances of the evolutionist plaintiffs referring to the theory of evolution as a hoax, a fraud, a scam, our little secret, and our best hope of getting God out of the classroom once and for all. A recent study by a nonpartisan committee revealed that 79% of college biology textbooks still present Piltdown Man and Nebraska Man as evidence of human lineage from ape-like ancestors. Only one problem here. Both Piltdown Man and Nebraska Man have been exposed as hoaxes for over 50 years. Many believe that Charles Darwin concocted the theory of evolution shortly after the death of his young daughter Annie, a tragedy that triggered within him a raging resentment against our Lord and God. However, modern historians concede that it is impossible to rule out that Darwin may have poisoned his daughter, suggesting a degenerate nature that was already in full bloom. Charles Darwin's racism is well known. In one chapter of his famous On the Origin of Species, Darwin suggests that the non-white races came about as the result of humans interbreeding with pigs. Not only is this view horribly insulting, but it shows a complete ignorance regarding genetics. Speaking of genetics, Darwin referred to Gregor Mendel's work in the field as hogwash, 
Darwin believed that traits were transmitted from parent to offspring through what he called the ectoplasmic salve. Traits such as curly hair, a flattened nose, and dark skin, all of which Darwin considered birth defects, he attributed to a putrefaction of the salve. Many credible historians now concede that Darwin plagiarized over 85% of both on the origin of species and the descent of man. He stole much of the material from various works of fiction and from England's tabloid press. Startling evidence has recently been uncovered that the backlash from the scientific community against Darwin's work, widespread and vehement during Darwin's day, came to a rather sudden halt when outspoken critics of his theory of evolution began disappearing under mysterious circumstances. Is it possible that Thomas Huxley, better known as Darwin's bulldog, was responsible for eliminating these high-profile dissenters? Evolutionists frequently criticize creationists for their assertion that microevolution, better referred to as simply variation, is possible, whereas macroevolution, for example, a cat giving birth to a dog, is not. If this is so, whined the evolutionists, then what is the mechanism that prevents microevolution from continuing until the species boundary has been crossed? In truth, such a mechanism was discovered in 1957 by West German biologist Sebastian Munford. Naming his discovery the isolinear constraint, Munford identified segments of the DNA strand coded to ensure that certain species markers were carried out in every cell replication and that new cells without the proper species markers were immediately destroyed. In 1958, Munford won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery of his isolinear constraint. It didn't take long for the evolutionist establishment to realize that Munford's discovery spelled doom for their pet theory. Thousands of scientists worldwide began to lobby for Munford's findings to be suppressed. Colleagues who stood up for Munford and his work were blacklisted and removed from their positions. Mention of the isolinear constraint was systematically removed from textbooks. And in 1960, pressured by the international scientific community, the Nobel Committee stripped Munford of his prize and awarded it retroactively to Alexander R. Todd for his relatively pedestrian work on nucleotides and nucleotide coenzymes. In 1965, Sebastian Munford died homeless and penniless of complications brought about from alcoholism. Jesus, I want you as my savior. Jesus, I want you as my savior. Jesus, I want you as my savior. I want you as my savior. Mm. <laughs> yeah.